Hello friends, welcome back. In this tutorial, we will study about fragmentation. Fragmentation can be external fragmentation or it can be an internal fragmentation. So first we are going to study about external fragmentation. So what happens in external fragmentation? Now as we know that uh, to be executed, a process should be in main memory, right? Suppose there is a process P and it needs to be executed. So for its execution, it must be stored in main memory, right? So this process P requires 5 MB of memory, right? Now what is the problem? Suppose in this uh, memory, one hole is of 1 MB, right? Another hole of 2 MB is available, right? And another hole of 3 MB is available. Right. So in a contiguous memory allocation, what happens? A process is stored in main memory in a single contiguous segment. Right. So what happens? This process P, it requires 5 MB of memory. So it requires 5 contiguous segment of memory. Right. But here in main memory, the free memory is scattered. Right. It is not available as a single hole. See, one hole is of 1 MB, another hole is of 2 MB, another hole is of 3 MB, right? So together they can satisfy the requirement of this process P, right? But what happens? This memory is scattered, right? It cannot satisfy the requirement of process, right? So in this situation is called external fragmentation, right? In external fragmentation, what happens? The memory is wasted, right? in the form of small holes right it is scattered throughout the memory right if they are combined together to form a single large hole then it could be used to satisfy the memory requirement of some processes so such condition is called external fragmentation now how this occur now consider this memory right Now suppose in main memory, right, uh, this uh, main memory is uh, completely occupied, right, uh, it is not free. So one of the process is there in that main memory that uh, it's, uh, is using 15 MB, right. Now suppose this process is terminated, right. So what happened? This uh, 15 MB of uh, memory will be free right it will exist as a single hole right now see another process which is using 10 MB of memory right it has also been terminated so what happens whatever the memory is occupied by that process it will be free now right so this process uh, was using 10 MB of memory so now this 10 MB of memory is free right it is available as a single hole now in main memory we are having two holes one is of 15 MB and one is of 10 MB right now suppose another process P1 arrives right and for its execution it requires 14 MB of memory right it requires 14 MB of memory so this process P1 is allocated this hole which is of 15 MB. So what happened? Uh, this hole which is of 15 MB it will be broken into two parts. One is of 14 MB right which will be used by process P1 right in which process P1 will be stored and uh, another hole which is of uh, remaining uh, free memory it will be of 1 MB right. Now uh, this uh, 14 MB of memory has been occupied by process P1, right? And this uh, 1 MB of uh, free memory is available. It is available as a whole, right? Now, similarly, some another process has arrived, process P2, and for its execution, it requires 9 MB of memory, right? Now, we have another process, P2, right? Which requires 9 MB of memory. Now, we have a 
hole one hole which can satisfy this requirement and it is of 10 mb right so what happened again this hole will be broken into two parts right one part will be given to process p2 right that is 9 mb and remaining 1 mb right it will be free it will be available as a whole so as you can see here that the free memory is scattered right so here there are small small free holes in memory right and uh, if they can be combined together to form a large hole then they can satisfy uh, the requirement of some process they can be used for some useful purposes but when this uh, small holes are there and they are scattered right so in this way memory is wasted now see here in this case uh, this uh, hole of 1 MB is here and uh, another hole of 1 MB is here suppose there is some process which requires only 2 MB of memory for its execution right then uh, this memory cannot satisfy its uh, requirement because here in uh, this memory 2 MB free memory is available but it is scattered right so such conditions are called external fragmentation so what is the solution of external fragmentation one of the solution of external fragmentation is compaction now one of the solution of external fragmentation is compaction in external fragmentation what happens that free memory is scattered throughout the memory right free available memory is scattered throughout the memory in form of small pieces so what happens in uh, compaction the content of memory is shuffled it is shuffled in such a way that uh, all of the free scattered memory that all will come along together all of the free holes in the memory will come adjacent to each other right content of memory will be shuffled like this in compaction so when uh, all of the free holes which are scattered in memory they come along together they are combined together to form a single large hole so here you can see in this diagram the shaded portion shows uh, the occupied portion of memory and uh, unshaded portion shows free available memory so here in this diagram you can see that here there are three free holes this is hole number one hole number two hole number three right so here free memory is scattered in small pieces right and uh, this uh, shaded portion shows the occupied memory so so what happens in compaction in compaction this uh, content of memory will be shuffled it will be shuffled in such a way that all the free holes will come along together to form a single large hole right so here you can see that here the before compaction the free memory available free memory is scattered throughout the main memory right so when the content of memory is shuffled by compaction then what will happen all of this free memory right will come along together to form a single large hole now let us study about internal fragmentation so what happens in internal fragmentation suppose main memory is divided into fixed sized blocks right and whenever a process arrives the memory will be allocated to that process in terms of blocks suppose let us consider an example that main memory is divided into fixed sized blocks of 2 MB right main memory is divided into fixed sized blocks and each block is of size 2 MB suppose a process P arrives and for its execution it requires 12 MB of memory so what happens whenever this process P requests memory it will be allocated six blocks right it will be allocated six blocks so suppose another process p1 arrives right and uh, for its execution it requires 11 mb of memory so whenever this process p1 will request uh, the memory it will also be allocated six blocks of memory so in this case what happens this process p1 will uh, occupy five free blocks but one of the block will not be used completely by this process p1 right if it is allocated six blocks of memory right this process p1 is allocated six blocks of memory this process p1 is allocated actually 12 mb of memory 
but for its execution it requires only 11 MB of memory so what happens one of the memory block which is of 2 MB it will be used only half of it right process P1 will use only half of it so half of the memory of that block will be not used right so 1 MB of memory will be wasted right uh, this process p1 is allocated six blocks of memory which are each uh, is of 2 mb so one of the block uh, will be used only half of it right one mb of that block will be used by this process p1 and uh, the remaining one mb of that uh, block will be unused right so this wastage of memory is called internal fragmentation